landowners in some cases can't say no to oil and gas infrastructure, but how do you explain to them that they can't say yes without caveats to renewable infrastructure? I think we know in rural Alberta, you don't have carte blanche to use your land in whichever way you want. I mean, they have rules around uh, home quarter. They have rules around spacing on well sites for oil and gas development. And so th this just seems to me to also be something that we have to be a little more deliberate about. I mean, we've heard stories, for instance, on on wind turbines, and I think I may have mentioned this before, um, one being built too close to the Oyen airport. So it required us to change the airport so we could get medevac flights in and out. I also hear from landowners in my own riding that a landowner is now impacted and impaired from being able to do spraying because the turbines were built too close to her property. So we have to be mindful that you can't use your property in a way that impacts another's property. And we also have to be mindful that we're managing it for other uses. It's it's not unusual for us to have spacing requirements and, and other provisions for how intense agriculture land is used. It's a case of then you have to have the natural gas first in place before you approve any more we have to have dispatchable, reliable power in place to meet what we think will be our, our peak power, definitely. Because I think we saw what happened on January the 13th, 5 o'clock at night. There was zero solar and there was 7 megawatts of wind of 6,000 installed megawatts. So we have to plan for the worst case scenario and do our projections about what we think our electricity demand is going to be and then make sure we're bringing on um, a, enough dispatchable power to be able to meet that. And I think that we have some some room. I don't know how long it will take us before we end up constrained. Maybe the minister can respond to that. But we're, we're very pleased to see that between March and, and June, we're going to see the lion's share of that come on. And so that does give us a little bit of additional um, additional room. Yeah, thank you, Premier. So just to clarify, under the AUC report and, and um, policy direction, there is no requirement for any of these proponents to add natural gas to their approvals. That is, is totally separate. The, the inquiries that we set forward for the ISO and the MSA will speak to that uh, reliability piece in the coming months.